What are some of the options for filmmakers for online distribution? I, it just depends on what you want to do. I mean, you can just self-distribute on Amazon if you like. You know, you can go ahead and do traditional pitching if you want to, to places like Hulu or Netflix. It's just how do you get past the gatekeeper and find that person to make that pitch to. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's where distribution companies come in. And you know, one of the things that we learned from AFM is that the sooner you get a distro company involved, the more likely it is your project's going to sell in the end because they want a certain quality. And, you know, if you pitch them, a, you know, not in market time, so not ahead of the AFM, not ahead of Berlin, not ahead of Cannes, they're more likely to listen and be accepting of your idea. Okay, but you did go to AFM. But we did go to AFM, that's right, we did. Yeah. Were you always <laughs> intending to go to AFM or? Um, honestly, no. I honestly it forget just, where was, we got the idea from. It sort of evolved yeah. into that because we were looking at options. Um, we did about, what, five months of, of research? Mm-hmm. Uh, prior to going because you know with a with an opportunity like that um, you try to get as many ducks in a row as you can before you go um, and it ended up being a learning experience uh, the the conferences were the best I thought because the the panelists at AFM they just tell it like it is mm -hmm. they tell they tell you what they like they tell you what what they don't like what they're looking for what they don't want to see so I think when by the time you get to AFM, they at least give you the courtesy of telling you, you know how how it actually is. They don't they don't kind of like hold it out there, you know. At that point, they're they're just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna tell you. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very expensive. So if you do want to go to AFM to check it out, I would say you know if you can get a, a private investor to fund you, like if they believe in your project and can fund you to go, that's the way to do it. Yeah, and we were because able to luckily secure that. And that's mm -hmm. why, how we got to AFM. Exactly. So what were some of the ducks that you had to get in what rows? Well, okay, so for example, the five months of research I was talking about, uh, there were 180 exhibitors at the film market uh, last year. So I went ahead and, and looked into all of those companies because you can't, you can't see like every single person uh, within the few days that you're at the film market. So you have to try to like find the people who might be interested in your project. So that was an insane amount of research. Um, there's platforms that I wish I had known about sooner. There's one called uh, Sinando, spelled C-I-N-A-N-D-O. Mm -hmm. And it is a, it is a platform um, for you to research your companies. And you can do this anytime. Uh, you know, like before you try to go to AFM, I would suggest getting on there. You can see who the VPs are. You're looking for your sales and acquisitions people. And if you oh. can, if you can find a like an agent slash management company to take on your film um, before you do anything with it, like marketing wise or or trying to sell it, then you know that's that's like the main way that things are done. And we didn't necessarily know that <laughs> going in. Right. So we tried to do our own uh, thing, which is like, it's really just not mm -hmm. how it's done there. So exactly. this person would represent you at the AFM? Yes. And like go with you. Yeah, and it's okay. more than okay. just having a sales agent. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, um, the most successful films and the most successful production companies like A24 yeah. is in the top 10 uh, right now worldwide for being a, a media dis, a dis, distributor from like the beginning to the end, like all the way around. Okay. You, you're, um, what does beginning to end mean? Um, just like from, from the start of how you package your film, like how you market it, mm -hmm. they, they take the whole thing over yeah. and they, they do the whole thing for you. You don't touch anything. Really? Yeah. yeah. And it's a hands off, hands off. You don't touch it. They no, they do everything. Sounds good so and bad. It and they, then you make the project, and then you give them the product. And then right. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's totally different than than what we thought going in. So yeah. you had an idea, and then you drive down, fly down, and then drove down. Oh. Okay, so you drive down. You see this giant hotel. Right? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh no, it was a lot of fun. Believe me, it's it's great. Like. Picture, God, how many people attend? Like, uh, well, it was like eight thousand something. Yeah, there were from literally thousands of people from all over the world. Yeah, and you walk into the lobby and it's just filled with like hundreds of people. It is easily. a real marketplace. They take over an entire hotel 
literally and it's literally organized yeah. from like the lower floors to the higher floors the bigger the company the higher the floor it's oh yeah really, it okay. is really organized like that yeah and it is a real marketplace they have gigantic huge uh movie posters and banners everywhere everywhere you go you're surrounded by film people yeah. everywhere yeah. you go and it's and it's every life. level too you're like talking with like super big people in hollywood and then mm -hmm. people like us and in fact there are even people just writers who go you know not even yeah. necessarily producers or producer reps but writers mm -hmm. um if you are a director it might be in, in in interest to go if you're an actor i would say skip afm unless you're just interested in producing in the long run Right. So your plan was to go there and just try to yeah meet try, people, try yeah to... try to meet people and try to sell the film. But honestly, you know the way that we uh, that I wanted to go with this was turn this into a TV series. And so you know one of the things that I learned was that AFM was actually not the best bet. If you're going to go for TV, your best bet is if you're going to want to stay in North America, it's NATPE, which is in Miami in January, that is super expensive. It costs like $1,600 minimum. Like that's the lowest ticket that you can get to go to everything. Uh, honestly, what's cheaper and what's recommended more by the industry is MIPCOM, which is in October in Cannes, France. That's a lot cheaper, but you, you know. You have to buy a plane ticket. But yeah, and you have to buy the plane <laughs> ticket to get over there. So basically at that level, they just kind of price you out. You know, like if you're. Yeah. And honestly, you know, Take I mean, the club exclusive. Yeah, yes. and honestly, is AFM great. isn't that expensive. I mean, the tickets that we bought were three ninety five. Mm -hmm. And if and if you are going, like, let's say that you do have a movie that you want to sell, go ahead and get the three ninety five because what you should be doing is that you should be, if you are acting as your own sales agent, you need to be contacting all these distro companies ahead of time and arranging meetings, and then your times are going to be spent in these meetings with different organizations. If you are just going for research, then I recommend buying the Industry Plus Pass so that way you can save money on the conferences that actually cost money in the long run because you're not going to be going to as many meetings. You're going to be going there for networking and so forth. Um, did, you, did you get interest? We got a lot of advice or both? I mean, it was mainly more advice and just a learning lesson. We did have a few meetings. Uh, we met with some guys from New York who were interested in collaborating with us in the future. Okay. And How did you, that happen? Did you... Uh, that was all rose actually it was an advance uh okay. so so yeah part of what i was doing leading up to afm was finding out who else was going and i was emailing like a crazy person just all the time every day sending out like an untold amount what kind of, of response emails. rate did you get uh it wasn't that great yeah. but the thing is like everybody who's going to afm does that they send out a ton of emails mm. So I had like a, like an entire system of like all these different folders that I was keeping these emails in and like cross-referencing stuff and saying like, okay, here's where this connects. And a few of those actually paid off. And that's how we got, you know, the meetings that we did. And, um, we, and we did get a hit actually. There was somebody yeah. who was interested in having us produce five episodes and then they oh, would have cool. like helped us with some of the rest of the funding. Yeah, but they wanted us to have five have, completed episodes yeah, and that's where you know it, it didn't work out because you know they they wanted us to have them done already and we were yeah. looking for development funds no. funds to get started and mm -hmm. when you by the time you get to afm that's that's not the place where you want to be you want to be have something under your exactly ready to, ready to sell ready to yes. sell exactly uh, okay. um so the Sorry. Oh, go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. No, I hit the camera. It was the camera. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trapped because yeah, my legs have to be stuck so like this the, so I don't kick the so camera. So the genre is comedy. Yes. How did that work out at AFM? Was it a well, crowded field? Is that a good... Honestly, so my research shows that if you were doing comedy, it's not going to sell well internationally. Now, that's where a lot of movie makers, especially if they go into theaters, they make their money back through international sales. And unfortunately, that's not where it is. You know, they're looking for horror. Horror is extremely huge on the international market. Family films surprisingly do well, and religious films do well. Is that just theatrical distribution, or just kind of across the board? Um, that was, I think, kind of across the board in the research that we did. Yeah, worldwide. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what plans do you have for um, yourself for future projects? Well, I have a, oh, no, no, not at all. So I have a couple of screenplays that I'm working on right now. Um, I do have a pilot that's already done and it's written. 
but I don't think that now is the right time to do it, like given our current political and uh, atmosphere. You know, I think that I think nowadays people are aiming more for dramas and just so I'm aiming more for a script to kind of like tell that story. And then as of right now, I mean, as far as an actor, uh, I actually got cast in a short film on Saturday where I'm the lead. So I'm happy about that. And then I have the closing weekend of my play uh, next weekend. Well, thank you. Thank you yeah. for your time. Thank, thank you, Rose. You. Yay!